Would the world fall into dark ages if they took all our synthesized fertilizer away tomorrow so it didn't go off into the atmosphere? Well, I've got this amazing question, probably one of the best questions I've had in a long time that really gets you thinking from Matt Miller, a long-term subscriber of mine. I'm going to read it out in a second. And it's related to this nitrogen wars that's going on. Now, if you watch the live show, you would see that it starts back way in the early 1800s, how we had to actually get more nitrogen to save our soils at the time. Now we're talking about if we produce too much of it, it can create all these other problems. But the thing is, if we don't have food, we starve. No farmers, no food. This is someone that said at my live show on the weekend uh, regarding what's going on in the Netherlands at the moment. They want to take away and close 3,000 farms. Now, this is not conspiracy stuff, guys. You can look it up online, right? The World Economic Forum and the agenda behind pushing all this now some of you may have your own thoughts and feelings about this and that is totally fine it's all about debate and all that type of stuff and having your own opinion i would never say that you're right and wrong and things like that i'm allowed to have my own opinion and from an agricultural point of view which i've been in this game for a very long time and if you knew the channel or older the channel you would see that i produce my own nitrogen here at home by worm farming and recycling all the scraps and waste and everything in my place to grow amazing food like you can see uh, behind here. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna read this question out and I'm gonna answer it the best I can. And I believe that it really gets our minds thinking. Now, if you're into this type of thing, hang around, listen to this question, and I'm gonna do my very best to answer it. Okay, subscriber question from Matt Miller related to my video the live one on the weekend. Worm castings and nitrogen battle of 2023 was the name of that video. If you haven't seen it, check it out. All right, just say the taps turn off completely for concurrent fertilizers tomorrow. How long would it take for permaculture principles to make farms highly productive again, to produce enough food for everyone? Is it say a two, three, five? or seven years effort to get food forests productive. Now, awesome question, Matt, and it really would get people thinking. They're going, hey, but we need to do all this. We need to do that to save this and all this. But if you take food away too quickly, you produce, produce these problems. Same like with the energy problems in Europe at the moment. They, you know, they don't have enough gas to back up the natural energy. I'm all for uh, having a clean environment. That's what I do. You know, this is what partly what this channel is about, is producing the worm castings and teaching people to compost at home in a small scale so we big it out into a bigger scale and also teach farmers how to actually become more productive sustainably and produce businesses. And I've actually helped farmers do that, believe it or not, and I've done it myself successfully. And we may turn this into a micro farm again if I get enough hands to do that. So... Let's get the question answered and I'm going to break it up into pieces and I'd like to get your thoughts and comments down below on what you think about this as well because this is a very interesting subject. I know it's not for everyone, I'm not teaching you how to grow tomatoes, but it's all interconnected with your food and believe you me, if this goes through and pushes through in the Netherlands and through Europe and stuff, it's coming to you and your country into the future. So we need to stand up and uh, be prepared for this. All right, let's do the first bit. Just say the taps turn off completely for concurrent fertilizers tomorrow. Now, if that happened, it's not gonna happen because there's too much money involved and all these type of things, but it could happen slowly over time, right? Because they're trying to do it now in the Netherlands. And uh, this would create a huge, a huge problem. 
like basically we would fall into the dark ages and there would be massive massive death all over the world they're already talking about in certain countries now that uh this is already going to start to happen now that we're running out of supplies and everything's becoming too expensive and people and uh, countries that are developing nations their dollars dropping the american dollars rising and they can't afford to buy the fertilizers because their dollars so weak and then they can't afford to buy american dollars so they actually actually have to learn how to become more sustainable themselves and because they haven't put these systems in place the education isn't there um, they're in dire straits there is some big problems going to be happening happening in the next few years unless you know money comes out of somewhere education comes out of somewhere and people start helping uh, it's it's much worse than people uh, realize and we've been smoked and mirrored with it but anyway so that would create a huge problem. I don't see it happening though. Uh, I believe that it will go out uh, into stages and it's being tested just like it is at the, at the moment in the Netherlands. I feel so far, sorry for those farmers at the moment. They're actually getting uh, thrown in the back of black cars and whooshed away and stuff like that. And oh, it's, it's, it's gnarly stuff, man. And we're talking about, this is a democratic place, right? But, Anyway, let's get into the next part. How long would it take for permaculture principles to make farms highly productive again? To produce enough food for everyone. Is it two, three, five or seven years effort to get good food forests productive? Now let's look at this last bit here, food forests. Now, permaculture isn't the answer, but a mixture of regenerative farming combined with permaculture would help and what it would mean is actually we would set it up and you would have to set it up in stages so you would still keep farming with the with the chemical fertilizers and things like that and you would set off zones and so zone a would become a space where you actually would set up no dig systems or low till systems and then you would be growing uh, cover crops and things like that to bring back the nitrogen and let's set let things sit fallow and then possibly go through and plant uh, again. The other thing would be uh, the biggest issue is also the monocropping, right? So we need lots of sprays and things like that because when you're planting in monoculture systems, you produce a lot of uh, pests and disease problems because everything's so close together, it can just breed and move through the system so quickly. So that's what uh, one of the things they would be dealing with. And so they would have to actually change their, the, this, the way that they actually the farms make money. And in micro farming and urban farming systems, we have a variety of different crops. And, it, and organic farmers have been this, doing this for about the last 10 years now, is actually is moving away from monoculture and growing at four, six, even 10 different crops. And if one doesn't do well, the other one does, and then they still get some money come in, right? So it would create a big problem like that. You, you know, seven years really to set up a big food forest but around the outside of these farms these sustainable agricultural farms we have what, what we call um, windrow uh, systems so they're not actually like windrow of like soil they're actually like long rows of uh, native forests and things and we plant food trees and fruit trees and different things amongst that as well that will grow well in that climate but we allow nature to move back in and that would be sucking in all the carbon through the leaves and back down into the ground creating carbon sumps right and at the same time because we're not digging up the ground as much and we're changing our, our practices with our sustainable farming we're not releasing the carbon back into the air every time we do this so when we're throwing chemical fertilizers chemical nitrogens into the ground and then we dig it back up again we release all that <laughs> back up into the atmosphere again and that's not good for the environment right so what we want to do is we want to lock it in there we want to trap that carbon in there we want to keep it in there and build up the soil profiles so we have really good healthy soil and as my friend tony would say feed the soil not the plants on simplify gardening there you go tony there's a plug for you mate <laughs> and 
what we would do then is we would actually set up the zones and we would still be fertilizing and farming the old way and we would slowly progressively move out of that keep feeding people keep bringing out the food create more jobs because we're building up all these systems and everything around we would need more hands-on to run these farms than all these big chemical big massive machinery that actually use a lot of fossil fuel energy so we use the energy from our bodies to do these things going back a bit of the old school way and you know and then working out ways to sell it more locally and ship it out close to as possible so we didn't have these big massive carbon footprints. So we'll look at this question just a little bit deeper. And it says, how long would it take for permaculture principles to make farms highly productive again? So we couldn't go straight in and just do just permaculture. It, it doesn't really work in that regards of the old style looking at permaculture of just food forests. Now, I'm hearing some stories about Netherlands just saying, oh, we just want to let those, uh, those, that land regenerate again come back to how it was and all that now that would be absolutely beautiful but it doesn't produce food that the people are going to need and it doesn't you know like we go through and forage and all that stuff it's just crazy thinking right there's more to it than that but i don't want to get too deep in it because then people are going to call me conspiracy theorists and theory and all that stuff again the question is would we be able to do it if they turned off the off the fertilizers and the answer really if we're going to go straight to it is absolutely no it needs to be done in stages we need to remanage our nitrogen we need to remanage our environment and the way we farm to the people and we need to actually work on more so much sending food out globally but working more and taking care of our local environment and you know like say for the netherlands is very close to other countries and things like that so it wouldn't be massive lots of energy having to ship all these things out so it's a really great question matt and i hopefully i've answered it as best as i could what my answer for you guys is is to become more sustainable at home something like what i'm doing depending on the space that you've got just start growing some food and become more self-sufficient in any way that you can because food is going to get more expensive they are going to slowly take away the nitrogen in places and things like that if they pull it off i'm hoping that they actually don't and that it actually changes in the right perspective with better management better soil practices and better farming practices sustainable farming practices and we actually start taking care of our planet instead of just pulling everything away and going you have to suffer now we don't have to suffer now. This can be done. It's been proven. We've, we've restored rain, or not rainforests. We've restored over in certain countries now deserts back to life using permaculture principles. So mixing them with sustainable agriculture and blending the two together over time, we can have something that's really amazing and not take away the resources that people need. Take away a farmer's lifestyle and income, what's he going to do? I don't know. Take away people's food, people are not going to be happy. Anyway, let me know what you think down below in the comments box. I know this is a bit of an unusual video for me, but I feel that we need to, I need to have a bit of a voice here. This is what I really believe in this stuff, and I believe also in becoming more self-sufficient i guess you can call start and call me a bit of a prepper now <laughs> in some ways anyway i'm going on too long now you have a great day happy everything and we'll see you at the next video real soon bye for now